You all keep asking, is it real? Is it fake? Well, of course it's fake, to you. But I made all this. I couldn't unmake it if I wanted to. Am I crazy? Yes, definitely. But nonetheless, I truly hope you enjoy what I made. Now, back to the show. Sincerely, The Author. It's now September 2017. Daisy Brown has been on the internet for four months now, and she's finally learned how to work iMovie thanks to her followers on Twitter. She can finally start editing her videos. This is where the transcripts start to become much more mysterious. If we watch the full-face Alan makeup look, it seems as though the captions are not from Daisy or Alan's perspective, but someone else's. I can't stop thinking about the future, about our future. Will the seeds I now sow grow into the fruitful plant of my dreams? Will it be a boy or a girl? Clearly this is from a woman who is expecting a child. Even at the end of the video, it sounds as though she's about to go into labor. Is it normal to feel this ill? My legs are wet. We could be witnessing the perspective of Daisy Brown's mother going into labor. The wording of each thought gives us a clue that Daisy's mother must have been some kind of poet, or at least a big fan in that area. It's interesting to note that in an earlier video, Daisy Brown read out a poem she found in a box hidden away in the attic, and she blurred the letter out, explaining that she felt it was an important letter that she didn't want us to see on camera. The letter is something her father kept in the attic, along with a bunch of photo albums albums and pictures of a strange woman Daisy had never seen before. This is most likely Daisy's mother, and we are witnessing her thoughts right before she gave birth to Daisy. The transcripts continue to expand upon the world of Daisy Brown, and we begin to witness past events in later videos. This one, for example, in Plant Update, we can see the creation of Alan from her father's perspective. This can't be right. Not now, let me work. Oh God, I can't feel this again. I can't make another gross monstrosity. I can't keep screwing up. No, go to your room. Can't you see Dad's working? God, it's heart's beating, but it looks like a miscarriage. I can figure something out. I'm sure I can save this, I have to. Daisy, if you interrupt me one more time, I'll pull your goddamn hair out. Strange choice of words. These two videos I just spoke about are right next to each other. One of them features the birth of Daisy, and the other one appears to be the birth of Alan, the two main characters we've seen through the whole series. Oh, but there's no time for conspiracies. Alan appears to be growing. Um, I just wanted to take this chance to show you guys. Um, I've noticed little blue bumps on him, like that. <gasps> oh my gosh. I don't know what I don't know what this is. It doesn't look like a arm or a hand or anything. In the following video, Daisy lets us know that Alan seems to be fine and is currently sleeping after his growth. But while he sleeps, she introduces us to the question box, something she spoke about on Twitter. So this is the question box that a couple of you guys were asking about. Um, this is the box that uh, my dad made if I had a question about something like what's a library or um, who are our neighbors I put it into the hole and the he would look through it and the questions that were appropriate to answer he would um, answer them for me and the questions that were not appropriate he would burn them um, and so this is just what the question box looks like I'm just curious because no one else said that they grew up with a question box. What made her father so strict? Forcing her to write questions in a question box? And if she asks a question he didn't like, he would burn it? Maybe the captions on this video can help us get a better understanding. It appears to be a conversation between Daisy and her father. Dad, why are you up this late? I'm sorry, I couldn't sleep. Nice when you're safest, Daisy. Look up, you see the stars? Yeah, I see Orion. The constellations are God watching us, Daisy. That's why at night, all the dangerous people go away. Tell me more about the dangerous people. 
No, you're too young to hear about them. But I'm older than Harry Potter. The answer is no. But what if a person comes here? How will I know if they're dangerous? You're asking a lot of questions, Daisy. You're starting to sound rude. I'm not trying to be rude, I'm sorry. What does God tell us about being curious? C curiosity killed the cat. I'm sorry, Dad. Now, Daisy, I love you. I won't be the one making the decision of if you're worthy of God's forgiveness. I know. I'm sorry. If you know, then don't ask. We are now aware that Daisy's father was religious, and he appears to be using the religion to his advantage against Daisy, to stop her questioning about the outside world. Her father clearly wants Daisy locked away in his home, and for her to ask as little questions as possible, even going as far as burning questions from the question box that he finds stupid. It's very clear now that her father is not the person she claimed him to be at the beginning of this story. He's been keeping her locked away from civilization for almost 19 years. Not only that, the parallels between Alan and Daisy's father are becoming harder and harder to ignore. Daisy's father seemed to be very strict towards her, going as far as even threatening to pull out her hair. And then, in this video, it's titled, Alan Pulled Out My Hair. Hi guys, is Daisy Brown here? Um. Alan pulled my hair out. Alan is becoming more dangerous and is following through threats that her father gave her when she was younger. I've also noticed her grammar and spelling around this particular time are getting progressively worse on Twitter and in the descriptions of her videos. Sure, there were plenty of spelling and grammar mistakes in her previous tweets, but now each tweet is gradually becoming harder and harder to read. Extra letters that shouldn't be there and words placed together. She blames it on the fact that she used to have a typewriter in the past and a computer keyboard is harder to use. But it shouldn't be getting harder for her, it should be getting easier for her. The more Alan grows, the worse her writing becomes. But the moment of truth has arrived, and it's in Daisy's new video, I Made Dinner. We find out exactly why her father is the way he is. Oh no, I'm losing so much blood. Oh honey, please stop shaking me. That won't make me survive. Let it grow big and strong. Let it do something great. I can't believe it. I finally gave birth and I'll never get to see this child grow. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, world. The death of Daisy's mother, who is confirmed to be called Rose at this point, could be the reason why her father is the way he is. Because Daisy was the only thing he had left in this world, he locked her away. He didn't want to risk losing her too. Which is why in the Another Cooking video, we find a conversation between Daisy and her father. Her father is looking through the question box and dictates what he wants her to know and what's a stupid question. Let's see here. Can I marry another girl? Daisy, that's a stupid question. And no, you can't. Uh, do you have any friends at your lab? Yes, I do. Oh. Last one already. Do I... Uh, do I have a mother? Oh, Daisy. I'm, I'm sorry, Dad. Bad questions, Daisy. Dad, I, I'm sorry. The father has clearly become unwell after the loss of his wife, and the strangest part about this conversation is that Daisy doesn't even know she had a mother. And when she finally asked, it was a bad question. And so this is just what the question box looks like. I'm just curious because no one else said that they grew up with a question box. Oh. Oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay, no one worry, I fix this. Suddenly, after a calm video, we are greeted with an emergency Alan update. Hey guys, just a really quick update. Um, so I'm really sorry that I worried some of you on Twitter the other day. Um, Alan is growing a lot. Last night his neck had some trouble and I sewed it up, but he's, he's gonna be fine. Um, his neck is back together. Uh, he's really gooey. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, um, but his roots, they're just still growing. Uh, my head is throbbing. My neck burns. Everything hurts. But that doesn't matter. I'm growing. Not only is Alan growing, he's beginning to learn how to move by himself. Daisy catches him drawing a picture using his mouth. He's been artsy. 
The captions of the video appear to be a date between Daisy Brown's father and her mother. It seems as though Rose took her father to an art museum. Ah, one of my personal favourites. The lighting and shading tells the viewer so much about the story. Hmm, he has no idea what I'm talking about. He's so cute, nodding like he cares about Spanish history. What's your favourite part of the painting, Curtis? Curtis is the name of Daisy's father. We actually get confirmation of this in a later video, but I wanted to point this out now so you'll understand why I drew the conclusion that this was a conversation between him and Daisy's mother, Rose. Remember how I said Daisy Brown's mother could have been a poet due to the letter Daisy Brown found and how she spoke when giving birth to Daisy? Well, this seems to confirm that she was some kind of artist as she talks about Spanish art history. Plus, she calls him cute, so there's clearly a relationship going on between these two people speaking. The composition of the piece, to me at least, divides the piece into three parts. Past, present, and future. Daisy uploads a video late at night, explaining that she's struggling to fall asleep. The video sparked a lot of curiosity between fans, and one person even replied, Odd question, do you think Alan's making you unable to sleep? I don't know, he could be doing it, but who knows? There's a lot I don't know about him. While Daisy struggles to sleep in the video, the captions come to life once again, but this time, someone calling out for help. Hello? Is anyone there? Please, can anyone help me? Hello? The door is stuck. Just calm down, the doctor is coming back. What'll he think if he comes back and sees you've bloodied yourself for no reason? I... I'm sorry. <sighs> don't be sorry. It appears to be a conversation between two people who are trapped inside a room waiting for the doctor. There is only one room we know that is locked at this point in time, and the closest character to being a doctor would be Daisy's father, considering that he is a scientist. Hi guys, it's Daisy Brown here. So, um, this, a lot of people in my most recent video said they wanted to see Alan and so I think I should explain that he's been growing, okay, he's been growing a lot. I don't really know how to explain it because I'm not really the expert on it, but um, all of the, the little root things that were growing in this area, they all sort of like bundled together. So Alan is growing roots. I think this is the best time to bring up the recurring theme we're seeing in Daisy Brown if you haven't already seen it yourself flowers. Daisy Brown not only has the name Daisy, her profile picture is of a rose. Rose is also the name of her mother. There are tons of flower designs found in the attic. Her mother referred to Daisy as a seed that will grow to be something great. She has plenty of garden videos talking about a flower pot with a missing space, which looks to be a metaphor on her life and how it feels like there's a hole she needs to fill. And now we have Alan, who even Daisy refers to as bean-shaped and is growing roots like a plant. It's best we keep note of this, as it'll be very important in our final analysis of the overall story. The new year comes along, and Daisy is finding it harder and harder to sleep. Alan appears to be keeping her up all night. She makes a video nonetheless to talk about her new year's resolution, and tells us she's not going to let stress overtake her. She's going to help Alan grow, which is what her father wanted. But midway through the video, it cuts to Alan dragging himself across the floor. He's clearly using his roots as a hand. God, I'm sore. It's like my whole body is wrapped up in Charlie horses, like a virgin in puberty. But this is doable. I can handle this. We then cut back to Daisy, and judging by her Twitter page, she was completely oblivious that Alan's cutaway scene appeared in the video. It's as if it never happened. In the next video, Daisy tries to draw pictures for her audience without Alan, but he does nothing but scream for the whole thing. So, the light falls. Alan? I'm trying to record, Alan. You have to be quiet. Ruining her upload and spoiling the fun. He then brings her pictures that he drew. These pictures are of Daisy herself, which seemed cute at first, until you remember that Daisy said Alan was blind. Not only is he growing or developing consciousness, he's developing sight as well. I have exciting news, everyone. So it turns out that Alan isn't as blind as I thought he was. This is an exciting development in Alan's growth, and it means that he's uh, growing 
mm. more intelligent and more powerful. Our predictions of Alan have almost arrived. As we see in Friendship Bracelet, Daisy Brown has locked herself in her room to try and stay away from him. We also see a shot of her foot with a bandage wrapped around it. She damaged it while trying to escape Alan, according to her Twitter. Thank you to everyone who has said they hope my foot is good. I hurt it when avoiding Alan. He can see and move around now. At the beginning of the transcript for this video, I thought we were seeing Daisy's thoughts losing her passion for her YouTube project due to Alan. But towards the end, it became clear that it's Curtis, her father. And I was going to just overlook this for the video until I read the ending. What's the point? Do I even want to do this anymore? I made so much progress. There's so much more to be done. Am I doing this because I care about it or because I want attention? Well, what's stopping me, hmm? Why not just quit now? Daisy. I love you, Daisy. This is for you. I'll make you proud. Okay, back to work. These last few lines show us that the father does love Daisy, and is even a driving force to keep him working. This gives us a much greater understanding about his character. He's not just some crazy religious guy added into the story to make it interesting. He lost a woman he loved so dearly, and is now so blinded by the fear of losing his daughter too, he doesn't realise that keeping her locked away from the world is damaging her. And in the next video, someone from his lab finally confronts him about this. Everyone back at the lab is worried about you. How much have you told them? Just that you're not leaving your house anymore. So they don't know about my work? No, they don't. But that's actually what I came here to talk to you about. You want to talk about my work? I'm only here because I care about you. What you're doing is wrong. And the fact that you can't see that is disturbing to me. Curtis, please, just say something. <laughs> I find it really funny that you think I care about what you have to say. Jesus Christ, do you hear yourself? You don't realize you're sick. My goddamn health is none of your business. Well, have you thought about her health? You're a fucking father now. Have you even considered what effect this could have on her? My parenting is none of your business either. You have a baby in the same house as that shit. This is now my fucking business. Well, why don't you get the hell out if I disgust you so much? I'll go and I'm coming back with Child Protective Services. No, you won't.